I have wandered. Welcome to Font Fontainebleau State Park on Lake Pontchartrain. There goes my wife to go pick up some beignets before we leave. Welcome to Fontainebleau State Park. That is not a Wisconsin name, is it? I have wandered a little out of my territory. I have, well, here's our backstory. Of course, we're from Wisconsin. My wife and I looked at our calendars, like when can we, the two of us, go do something together? And we found a little spot where we weren't both booked up at the end of February. And we booked, we, so we booked, put that on our calendars. We didn't really book anything because, you know, you never know what the weather's going to do. So we thought about our schedules and where we could go. And I was thinking maybe we could do Mammoth Cave. That's within a day's drive. We could pull that off. And, you know, that's indoors, sort of. Well, a week before the trip, you know, because I didn't overbook this thing, I looked at campgrounds and realized everything in Kentucky and Tennessee, none of the campgrounds open until March. That's next week. So I couldn't book. So I started looking further down, like, well, and knowing I'm gonna have to go a little further to stay warm. So I looked a little further out, decided let's look at Mississippi. It didn't look like it was going to be quite warm enough. So we looked a little further. Let's go to the other end. Let's go to the Gulf. Well, as long as we're on the Gulf, let's go to New Orleans. So we found this campground on the north side of Lake Pontchartrain. And that's where we are now. So I'm going to show you the campground here. It is not on the lake, but it's fairly convenient if you want to go into New Orleans you just gotta drive about four miles down and you catch the causeway across Lake Pontchartrain and then it's only a mere 23 miles across the lake yes you can see the curvature of the earth as you drive that causeway it's pretty amazing because when you start out you can't see the trees on the other side and as you go, there's little rises. You see, oh, I can see the trees, and then they go away. And after we said, hey, let's go to New Orleans. Hey, look, there's a campground. Hey, there's sites available for 18 bucks a night. Not too bad. Had to book two nights right now, though. Well, it turns out we had to book two nights because I looked again at the calendar and go, oh, it's Mardi Gras. End of the month here, because next Tuesday is Fat Tuesday, and the parades and events go on for week or so beforehand so I want to give you a big clue if you do decide to make a drive down here from wherever you're coming from although if you're catching this you may be local um, there's a podcast we found specifically for my wife found a podcast about a kayak canoe trail or guide that comes out of the state park here and goes down to the lake and you go through like four ecosystems in that. Now, if you're looking for that podcast, and it's a great way to fill many hours driving down here and learn a lot about New Orleans and the area, it's called Beyond Bourbon Street. It tells you all the things from a local, someone who grew up in New Orleans, and connecting with other locals of things to do in town besides go to Bourbon Street and it's well worth the time on a long drive to really learn about where you're going. I wish I could find something like that for everywhere I went. Um, it's a great way to educate yourself before you arrive and things to do. So things I learned is, okay, here are all the certain foods you should have, like a beignet, gotta get some of those. Um, basically, it's a fried dough ball with lots of powdered sugar. Um, another thing called snowballs. That's like a shaved ice, but different and the place we went to yesterday had it around ice cream so you get a cup with the ice cream in the middle and then the shaved ice and two different flavors 
So that's enough about the local cuisine for now. Now I'll show you some pictures, some other food we got. I did get a poor boy yesterday. My wife got like a little trio um, meal that included some jambalaya, some, I forgot what else, but you know, standard things that you would get in New Orleans. So let's take you on a campground tour now. Now it's gonna be a little bit of a walking tour. I'm not gonna walk the entire thing and show you everything, but I'm gonna show you sections and what these different sections are like because of course the maps are terrible. Um, somewhat useful more than once you see it, but beforehand it doesn't help you much. So here's our main entrance road. Coming in here, I've got one through going that way. There's a whole separate section off to the left. And this section that comes down from over here. I'm not sure how to get into this because this, this is where you come out. This is like 99 over here. So there's an original section of the campground. And this on the outer right is part of it. What you see off to the left with all the RVs, that's a new section. Um, at least it certainly feels that way to me. So in this first stretch here, you'll see I got all these little pull-throughs straight up this road here. It's going to go down out to a loop, and that's where we're staying is off in that loop. So the section over here on the left, I don't know what numbers, I'll check that in a little bit. Um, and that's also where the comfort station is and things. That is all newer, new pads. It looks freshly cleared to make room for the RVs and it isn't quite grown in yet. But out here you can feel that the woody feel along these sites on the outer side, outside. So these are all back ends on the left with power. And it looks like we do have hookups along here on the right as well in these pull throughs. So I'm at site four, six on my left. So it's not an even, a simple, even odd thing to help you figure out where, if you're a pull through or back in, but that's visible on the maps. All right, so here's our split where we start the loop here. So sites 25 through 48 are off in this back loop. Again, we continue with the theme of back ends on the left and pull-throughs on the right. I'm at site 25 on my left right now. All right, as I continue this journey, let me tell you a little bit about my journey down here. We left soon after an ice storm in Wisconsin. That's kind of rare that we have ice storms. And I figured, okay, the storm systems moved through and our date to move, leave was set. So we started heading south. The weather was clear through most of Illinois Around St. Louis, we hit an, an ice storm, sleet and ice. We didn't get out of it, or until, we didn't break freezing until Mem southern side of Memphis, where it was raining, and that's where we wound up spending the night. And right there, it was 32, 33 degrees all night long. Then we headed south from there, and we just had to go to Biloxi to get to the Gulf Coast and actually put our feet in the Gulf. It wasn't until about halfway through the state before we started at the 50, and then it quickly went 60, 75 by the time we got to the Gulf Coast. And then the next day when we got here, went back to 56 and stayed 56 all day long. Okay, so I am now, it's like 23. Again, as I turn it around, you've got the back ends on the left and pull throughs on the right. Now, what I forgot to mention is when we hit that split where we had, you know, to go into this loop, from that point on, these are more primitive sites. There are no hookups here. And there's also no restroom back here. So that comfort station that's in the new section that's, you know, got your bathrooms and your showers and there's laundry over there as well. Um, that's the nearest bathroom to these sections out here. Now this one, we got the pull through, but he's camped way back there. Let me give you this site number. It's one of the few that really has a good camping spot for a tent. It's 37. Even room for a hammock back there. 
I'll show you our site when I get to it so I can give you detail on what these sites are like. And some of these in here have good spots for tents. Now when we booked, we did that thing where you go to the website, you find your site, like, ooh, I want that site. I click on it and then it says, oh, you need to register for the site or log in. So we logged in, in the process of logging in, that site that we clicked on was now being held and we couldn't book it because it was being held by a mystery person and we wound up having to book one of these outer loop sites. So we really wanted to be over here, but we wound up over here. So let's take a good look at these sites. So this particular one, and let me back up, I am at, well that's not right, it says, oh 41. This is 41. There's a fire ring, or fire a grill out here in the pull through. Now it's got, I didn't realize this, this uh, little place for sleeping out back here. And this backs up to a different campground and there is a playground there. Um, so you got a nice little place to put tents back here. This is a little different than most. That site next to us also has some good places for tents too. All right, now that they're leaving, we can now, this is the site we had. Um, like I said, my wife's off getting beignets right now. So this is what the site's like, the back end site where we thought we were going to be. Now, I guess that's where you put your tent. There's nothing back here, maybe way back here, I guess. Now, check out these weird little ant hills. You see these around. I don't know when they're active, but got a grill and fire pit. Um, no logs, not much wood around here to gather for fire. And I did not see a place to buy firewood here. That kind of surprised me. Over in our site, we have a trash can, not geared up to take, keep the bears out or anything like that. It's just enough so that, uh, heavy enough that a raccoon can't get in there. So we have our grill. I just didn't even notice that was there because that's on the wrong side of the vehicle. Um, picnic table and fire ring and our hole here and don't want to fall in that and I guess the, well there used to be a tree here and this I guess is where you'd put your tent let's go explore the newer section of the campground Forty-seven looks like a really nice site if you want a tent. There's lots of great places back in there. Going down a side spur, sixty-three on my left. My site's over there. Well, they keep with the theme. Back ends on the left, pull throughs on the right. to the soft sand there. I'm at site 67 on my left. Love the deck off the side of that one. Awnings on there too to cover it if you need to. That's site 68. Now that's a whole different section. We'll go cover that in a little bit. We'll continue around here. So this whole section to me feels like a mix somewhere between an RV park and a state, state park campground. There's plenty of room between. You don't feel crowded. It is fairly open and there's the comfort station there so there's a loop around that here. Chat with a gentleman who owns the RV with a very decorated window. Um, found out that why this looks so fresh and new here. Um, is the fact that 
uh, I think it was Ida or some other hurricane came through last year or the year before and pretty much tore this section apart. So they had to do a lot of rebuild, um, take out a lot of trees that have been uprooted, and that's why things just look total mess here. Um, but in the t when they did that, they put in new pads for a whole lot of this. So it looks like a new section, but it's not really a new section. Okay, so that's that section through here by this central comfort station. Now we have three campground hosts here. And then I'm gonna come down to the end here, turn right, and show you a different feeling and section of the campground. Okay, I'm gonna take this little jaunt down here. The side section, the site's 86 through 98. So that was a group campsite on my left here that I just passed that I feel like Boy Scouts maybe. Over here on my right, all of this section back here is just tenting sites. It, it is the most open and easy to find a spot to put a tent. The section I was in, it, it struggled to find, a, like over here, like where do I put the tent? And it's dry right now. If it wasn't dry, I wouldn't know where to put a tent. Okay, 86. There are more and more Class Bs out here these days, aren't there? I was so ahead of the curve three years ago. I like this section. If I had known about this, we probably would have tried for this. Actually, I think it was booked up. Again, I'm over here right now. Bathrooms way over there, that yellow building beyond those tents. So this stretch is backing up to a road to my right. Now this particular park, as the state park, closes at 9. There is no activity here after 9, and it is quiet hour in here at 9. To the point where we were showing up after 5. We got a call at 4.30 on our arrival day saying, are you going to be here? If you're not, here's the code to the gate. So they locked the place down. See, uh, there's no place to, in the woods to set your tent. So they're actually on the concrete. So these are good for pop-ups or, which I haven't seen a pop-up here. Nobody has a pop-up here. Or little mini schoolies. And this takes us down to the end of the road where I started my tour down there. I'm gonna show you this though, this one, 95. Nobody's here right now, so I can do this. This one, so unlike where they're, where they have to park camp on the, the uh, pavement, here, if you work your way around the mud spot here, there are several spots you can camp back here. You got two picnic tables and the fire ring back in the woods. Oh, the other one also has that. Um, but no, you know, it's a little swampy. I'm sure you will be hearing the frogs at night. I might have some mosquitoes back here. So come prepared. Like I said, this whole section over here I don't know how they designate sites or just first come first, you know, tent, however you want to move in. And we have this section over here around the bathhouse of more improved sites. 106, 104 over here, 105. Now, they're kind of smart enough. It makes it a little harder to find your site because they don't have a post out front. The post is back with the power and the hookup, but that way nobody's taking it out as they make their corners here. Otherwise, I'd probably be taking out these posts. 102 over here. So that makes more sense. So that's what section we're in now. I'm gonna go back around. Now, slowing down here. Sorry, I'm making dizzy. Playground over there. 
the original section, the original bathhouse is over there. And my site is somewhere behind these RVs is where I'm staying. So there's 109 here. That backs up to the woods. So it's just kind of nice to know. We have all of these out here that are close to your neighbors. But there's a few hiding out here where you get a little more isolation. This one's got a lot of open space next to it. 129. 130 over here. 131. 143 over there on the end with that fifth wheel. So these back up to the woods. Nice little shade. You can throw tents out there if you want. Let's go down this row. There's one more row over there with back in sights over there. This is a big pull through right here. 132. 128 is a pull through. Yeah, the left is pull throughs here. The rest of these are back ends. All with full hookup. That's the only pop-up I've seen here. But knowing what the moisture is like down here, I would not want to be hanging out pop-up in the summer. There's always feel wet. Now, up above that RV there is the Wi-Fi. There is Wi-Fi throughout the campgrounds, but like any other Wi-Fi, when it's full, it's going to be slow. Now, off over that way, the end of the road here is a building. Beyond that building is Lake Pontchartrain. Looking north, got this section here. Oh, there's another bathhouse here on the end. So there's actually two bathhouses in this section. That's kind of nice. But this whole section over here is open. I don't know how you reserve it. There are no numbering systems. It's just an open field with woods in the back. And this section, the last section over here, with all these back ends, back up to the road, but also have a lot of room behind them. What I found here that seems to be lacking is walking trails. Signage is all about how to drive there. How to get to the Beach Pier Pavilion Visitor Center. So the Beach Pier Pavilion is right there. There's no walking trail. If it's, I mean, give me a boardwalk or something, because if the other night when I came by here, this was soggy and it hadn't rained that much. But out here, you got a lot of beautiful old trees covered with Spanish moss. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. Well, that's my campground tour. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you around down here. So this is the day use area. I'm gonna go back, camper, get my beignets, and then we'll come down here and look around at the waterfront and day use area. It is extensive. One thing I forgot to mention is the deer. There are quite a few deer that live in the park and they have no problem wandering through the campgrounds and certainly in this day use area, but they know how to avoid the people. But they'll get along with you if you don't approach them, they'll just hang out if you see them. So in the back behind the playground, I feel as if this is a group campsite area too. Um, we got a large fire ring over, or a fire ring with large grouping of seating to hang out in. Now, I'd never seen these before. I saw this first at the rest stop in Mississippi, the seed pod. But these are really cool. We don't have these up north that I know of. That is really cool. Well, I just saw my wife pull up with the beignets, so time to eat. All right, here's my bag from Cafe Du Monde. Now, this is this particular picture is the one in Central in City Park. There are Cafe Du Monde's all over the area, so you don't have to go to there. But if you look in here, there are three beignets hiding in that powdered sugar somewhere. Let's see if that's that's there what may we're talking or may about. Not be powdered sugar all over the seat of the car. You caught that, right? Yeah. <laughs>
see the causeway out there. And Lake Pontchartrain is all the way over there. And there's a spot where it kind of disappears over the horizon. And then there's a bump, there's a high point where it rises up over a shipping channel and then disappears again. That is the first vessel I have seen out on the lake since we've been here. This big sailboat over there. So if you're willing to explore, there's these little sand paths and wander. I have no idea how far. We're going to find out. Get away from the crowds. Not that there's crowds today, but on a warm day, I'm sure it is. And there are many different ecosystems here, too. So behind this little sand bar, we've got our more swampy area. Diving. It's shallow. You don't want to dive up here. So that's Fontainebleau State Park on the north shore of Lake Pontchartrain, only about four miles from the causeway. Take you right into Saint into New Orleans. Nice campground. We paid 18 bucks a night for non-electric. Um, there may be cheaper, more primitive sites, and there's hookup sites as well. So there's a range of facilities available. Limited bathroom facilities in some of those areas. Beautiful waterfront property down here. Massive day use area. Um, very large bathhouse. It, it seems bigger than the beach could support. Lots of little side areas where you can wander and find more beach area. And there are these beautiful trees all around the day use area. And I'm gonna end this video with some photos I took when I came down here my first night before I even got a chance to see it in the daylight. But I took some photos down here and there are some overhead lights in the parking lot. They kind of lit them up kind of nice. So let's see how those look. Thanks for coming along on the journey. See you on the next one. Get on out there.